Hey, haven't heard from that one colony we keep messing with in some time. Uh, maybe they got so scared and ran off. Remember the look on that one colonist's face when I killed the chinchilla? <laughs> Crap, we're under attack, but how? <laughs> that was for Mr. Fluffy Bob. <laughs> Raining, it's fun, it's exciting, gets your blood flowing, and makes Norse gods happy with you. There is, however, debate on if actually going out and attacking other bases is worth actually doing. And we will get into the pros and cons of why you should or shouldn't raid outposts. Keep in mind, we say outposts, we mean proper faction bases, not bandit camps. Bandit camps you should try to deal with because, hey, loot and prisoners. No, we are talking about actually declaring war on a faction and heading on to their turf to fight them. Mm -hmm. So stick around, and while you are sitting back and relaxing, why not hit that subscribe button? and give our video a like. Every 50 likes we get on this video is one anti-grain warhead we drop on a raiding party. Or someone's wedding. Ooh, 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 ooh. So there are two camps in RimWorld. On the subject of outpost raiding, the camp against raiding does have a few good points against actually raiding. Number one, you have to expand resources on an attack that might not get you more in return. Number two, you risk having your colony base attacked while your fighting force is out and you can lose your colony or other colonists during this time. And thirdly, you risk losing people in your fighting force during the attack. Honestly, good points. However, on the flip side, one, you can earn more rare resources from the camp like advanced components or higher grade arms and armor and neurotrainers. Ooh. Number two, destroying a faction base makes other factions like you more. And third, it's a bragging rights reward to say you actually did it. And fourth, and the most important of them all, it's fun, dang it. It's just fun. So, is it worth actually doing an outpost raid? Honestly, it depends on your playstyle and how comfortable you are in taking the risks. It's not the most worthwhile endeavor, but it can be fun to do. So this guide will go under the assumption that you believe it is completely worth doing. So first off, what should you bring on a caravan to actually raid the outpost? First, ask yourself, what kind of outpost are you dealing with? because depending on the technology level of the faction, you can do things differently. Tribals are pretty easy to handle. Given they won't have higher tier weaponry that can go through heavy armor, they'll don't think it will be a cakewalk. They usually have far bigger numbers than other factions, so you will be at a disadvantage of numbers. Raiding them through drop pods is viable, though you will have to walk back without pack animals unless you built enough drop pods to bring your favorite muffalo with you. Make sure everyone is armed with assault rifle type weapons like the SMG, assault rifle, or plasma rifle. Your aim here is to use bullet numbers to bring down the tribals who aren't armored. Bring a pawn or two who are melee oriented with a good shield, belt, and armor combination as they can distract a lot of pawns and keep your shooters safe. Good weapons for this is the plasma sword as the fire will cause enemy pawns to panic. Also, while this guide is assuming you aren't using mods, if you are using mods, the run and gun mod can change your game plan with just fast pawns running around shooting tribals who chase them. But for this video, we are assuming you're doing a vanilla playthrough. Bringing go juice and wake up can be a useful tool, either to speed up your pawns to outrun and gun opponents, and wake up can keep pawns in a fight. It's not necessary, but I figure I should bring it up as a dose or two can help you in a prolonged fight. Food is also a must, but if you are caravanning, of course, you know to bring food. No one is that stupid to not bring food in a caravan, I think. Building material can also be useful to make sandbags, walls, and possibly beds for makeshift hospitals in a pinch, which leads to medicine. Always bring medicine. I recommend minimum three units of regular medicine per colonist you are bringing to the fight. Assume any one of them will get shot and need attention. Trust me on this one, the last thing you want is Olga club your face dying of infection to the way back because you forgot to bring enough medicine for her. Don't make the same mistakes I did. Don't let Olga club your face die of infection. Other things you can do with building materials is set up a small encampment by bringing or dropping 
in turrets, mortars, with shells, batteries, even a power cell if you got one to set up a small base for your pawns to fall back to. You win when the enemies all die or retreat from the map, so you only have to outlast them. Though keep in mind this plan to make a base only works well during a tribal attack because higher tier bases will have mortars. Lots of mortars. Many mortars. Usually that come raining down on you the moment you get on the map. Not fun. Yeah, don't set up encampments unless you have dealt with the mortars. So after you finish dealing with the outpost, you could grab everything and walk back home, but you could actually, using drop pods, deliver resources you need to make and refuel new drop pods within the base. Doing this can allow you to deliver back all the resources from here, but make it so your caravan can move back home faster, even can send back wounded people so they can quickly get the help they need back home. That's how you can deal with a tribal outpost, though they are pretty easy to handle. What about a pirate base, though? Or if you're feeling really ballsy, a royalty base. Well, now you got to plan things out a little differently. First off, your guys should bring armor-piercing weapons. This is for two reasons, turrets and taking out heavily armored angry pirates. Yeah, while you can overwhelm tribal-based opponents with assault weaponry, higher-tiered enemies require more subtle planning. First off, most if not all outposts of pirate and higher-tier factions will have a mortar, at least one. That can ruin anyone's day, so you got a couple of ways to handle them. Number one is split the caravan and send one person in to just have the mortar person fire on them and waste the ammo. Do this if the pawn has good movement traits because one hit knocking him out will make him lost because you had no other pawns on the field. Have a couple of pawns move to that region and just fire on the guy or mortar breaking it or at least knocking out the mortar guy. Not always the best choice because you can alert the entire base and now you got 20 other guys coming for your few guys. For this bring grenades or a rocket launcher. You could fire on it and blow it up and run back to safety. Perhaps at the setup turret and ragers your others are working on. Now this is more of a comedic way to handle them but you could send a couple of pawns into the region with an animal pulsar and some building materials and make a quick shack. Then when inside of the bunker trigger the pulsar. I admit it's not the best plan because your pawns won't be able to move out of mortar fire but you can't deny it's hilarious to see the raiders have to deal with an army of animals coming for them. Plus once the animals are all dead you get free meat. Now, once you get the mortars out of commission, you will have a bunch of angry pirates coming for your guys. This is why you want to bring turrets and material for cover. You want to set up a quick defense. Oh, and make sure any animals you bring are in a zone. You don't want your buffalo running off and getting shot, even though it happens. All the time. All the time. All the time. Keep an eye out for any opponents with rocket launchers. Using your fastest pawns with sniper rifles and maybe bionic legs and gojis for more speed to intercept and snipe them. Or possibly firing their missile. And not targeting all your explosive turrets, run and gun is great for this tactic. But if you plan your moves well enough, you can have your pawn avoid missile fire. Kill enough raiders and they will retreat and you win. But don't celebrate yet. Your next problem is the turrets they more than like we have. Dealing with them is at least pretty easy. Check power lines and using long range attacks shoot at any solar panels or battery banks to disable their connection to the grid. Best part about doing this rather than aiming at the turrets you get to keep them either to salvage your parts or just bring home to replace the turrets you may have lost bringing here. Honestly that's about all the good advice I can give you when it comes to dealing with an outpost. It's all about positioning and picking off the enemies one by one and not giving them the chance to hit you back. And when it's all said and done. Hopefully you find the treasure you were looking for. Though of course it's not a Newbert guide if we don't mention Vanilla Expanded. So as a bonus we are going to give you friendly advice on how to deal with the forces of the Vanilla Expanded factions as each one does change some things forcing you to tweak your strategies. First up is the medieval factions. While similar to tribal in numbers, what sets them apart is their armor. These guys are the factions who had the bright idea to take those heavy chunks of metal and turn them into protection. So you will be dealing with tankier opponents. However, thanks to this armor, they are slower. You can take advantage of that with by using grenades, molotovs, or torch belts to set them on fire and use the hit and run tactics. Yes, you can kite them. Single shot with armor piercing is also recommended, but you might get overwhelmed, so keep that in mind when planning your attacks. Similarly to the medieval warriors, the vikings are also going to be armored, but they will bring friends of their own, their wolfhounds. 
fast and vicious attack dogs. Definitely going to be a problem. But if you focus fire, then with multi-shot weapons, you will be fine, probably. After that, use <laughs> after that, use armor piercing single shot to knock them to the ground or fire to burn them alive to distract them. Yes, burn them alive to distract them. Speaking of animals, I don't recommend bringing war animals with you, as unlike ones at a base, it's harder to get the medical attention out in the field. Bring your best dog friend if you want to uh, just don't say I didn't warn you. I didn't don't say I didn't warn you. you, you that. That's yeah. Next are the Bandit Outposts of the Settlers expansion. These are your classic desperados and gunslingers. Slightly armored, but they have fast gunslinging skills, so don't go at them without armored pawns. If you can knock them down, you win. Though they do have a habit of throwing TNT, so staying in one place isn't recommended. Think of them like tribals in terms of armor, but pirates in terms of firepower. Finally, the Mechanoids. We already did a video on them, but to summarize here, if you want to take on these ship bases, first off, always be moving. They tend to have auto mortars, and it's possible the movement you spawn in, you get sniped. Kind of unfair, if I'm being honest. Second, EMP weapons, grenades, and if you have vanilla expanded heavy weapons, bring some pawns with those. Other than that, armor piercing weapons, mono swords, and Zeus hammers are also great. Honestly, my best advice for them is carefully. Mechanoids aren't easy opponents, okay? So picking them off one by one is usually safe and going to be your best bet. Run and gunning them, and of course staying out of the line of fire. After that, just shoot at lightly defended areas to cause a chain reacting explosion. Then reap the rewards! Best advice I can give because these guys are the hardest fight. Well, outside of a certain other faction, but then again, my advice for him is run, run for your life. Why did I do this to yourself? Why, why run, run? Bren, why do you keep inviting him into our videos? No, no, Bren, no. Not in this guide. I suppose for one more mod that could help you with raiding is the Short Range Transport Ship mod, or SRTS, because it gives you the ability to make a reusable transport ship. Great for hit and run attacks, and even lets you travel all over the world so you can show up unannounced like the Spanish Inquisition. It also doubles as its own generator so you can land, set up a turret base, and use it as your power source. Of course, it's up to you to decide if it's too overpowered or not to use, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this mod. Oh, and you can commence Operation Bomb, the ever-living crap out of your enemy. Hopefully this advice helps you in dealing with faction outposts. There are actually mods you can download to make the faction bases a little harder, like powerful faction base or large faction base. They are going to be bigger and more heavily defended, but our advice of smaller turret lines and run and gunning can apply to them. Though if you want to eliminate bases from afar, try vanilla expanded mechanoids or rim atomics, because you can get nukes and everyone knows in the game of rock, paper, scissors, nuke beats all. There are always other options. Some serious, some more silly meme. Speaking of memes, here's a random meme one of our editors found on the RimWorld Reddit. I can't see it right now because I'm talking into a microphone, but you can see it and it's probably a really good meme, so I'm hoping you like it. Let us know any advice we might have overlooked and maybe share some of your best war stories and come from behind victories against factions. While you are at it, check out some of our other video guides or my Let's Play where I'm sure to make mistakes mistakes that make you go wonder, hey, why isn't he following his own guides? Now, back to the video. Oh wait, the video's over. Click on another video, and then we can be back to a video. Yeah, see you guys later. <laughs>